My beloved brothers, sisters, dearest listeners, we know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was given prophethood, he was alone. He was one man. In the cave of Hira, Jibreel alayhi salam came to him. He ran down from there after receiving first revelation straight to his wife Khadija binti Khuwaylid radiyallahu anha, who became the first companion. She was not just his wife. She became the first one to believe him, being the first one who heard the story. Similarly, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was the first from among those who heard and immediately accepted from the men. And Ali radiallahu anhu from those who were younger, etc. So these people who recognized the man since he was young, and they knew from his history that he has only been known for goodness. He was known as a sadiq and this was rare amongst them, meaning there were people involved in alcohol and so many different things. Yes, they were from among the Arabs, those who were honest, but his was an outstanding honesty. He was honest to the degree that if he had to give up something that was dear to him based on being firm upon honesty and justice, he would let it happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that type of firmness. This is a quality that is loved by Allah. To stand firm upon justice even if you are losing everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. They recognized this quality in him. He was known as as sadiq meaning the truthful, and Al-Amin, the honest. Truthfulness and honesty go hand in hand. One cannot be honest if he is not truthful, and one cannot be considered truthful if he is not honest. So these qualities, the truthfulness was known since he was young, from a very early age. So these people who accepted Islam first, what was it that drew them to it? Yes, it was Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he looked at the hearts and chose the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the best of all of them. And he made it the most noble of prophets, the highest in creation, the final messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he looked at the hearts and he chose for that Nabi whom he loved the most, the best of companions. Which means there was something about the hearts of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was different from all other hearts. And this is why Allah chose them, selected them and became pleased with them. And subhanallah, look at these qualities, honesty, trustworthiness, truthfulness. These were qualities not only of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had them of the highest degree. Like I said, that degree was absolutely rare at the time, which means, you know, if someone came to you, you were honest. Then they spoke to you about something very dear to you. You probably were still honest. Then you were finding out that you were about to lose your family, your loved ones, your relatives, everybody. As a result of your honesty, it becomes a little bit difficult now to remain on that path. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was upon that highest level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him nubuwa. As a result of that prophethood, guess what he lost? Subhanallah. What he lost in terms of worldly life is considered a lot. But in the eyes of Allah and in terms of the deen, it is nothing. His people turned against him. The entire community turned against him. Everybody turned against him. He was in minority. Him and his companions, they encircled him. They had sanctions against him. They made sure they didn't receive food for so many years. They were struggling, suffering. They were persecuted. They were driven out. All of that happened. In terms of dunya, it was a total loss. Do you agree with me? Which means if we were to look at it from a materialistic perspective, there was nothing that was gained there. Allah owns the treasures of the, the world and the heavens. Allah owns everything. And He chose for the most beloved to Him to have very little of that at the beginning. Subhanallah. How many of us, our lives rotate around materialism. We would sacrifice anything, even our own family members for a dollar or two. It is happening in this world. May Allah safeguard us. So now you look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. I am intrigued by their lives. Why did Allah choose them? Why not us? Why not you and me? Why were we not chosen to be from among the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Before I answer that, the good news is we can still be his companions in the Akhirah if we abide by what he brought. May Allah make it easy for us and may Allah grant us forgiveness. They were companions because their hearts were special. 
What was so special about their hearts? They had honesty. They were honest. And with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, their honesty levels became higher than they were prior to Islam. Because he was the highest level of honesty, the highest level of character. You know, when you have a magnet that is powerful, then you take weak magnets, weak magnets and put them close to that magnet, they become strong and they become magnetized once again. They have that power and that effect again. So much so that if you were to take a steel nail or a little nail and put it on a magnet for a long time, it will become magnetic. Subhanallah. It will start drawing towards it. The same applies to the companions. Here was the power, the center of this magnetism towards goodness. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the companions began in the same direction to get from it and to become similar or to become obviously not the same but to, to gain strength in those beautiful qualities to a very high degree right so i look at these companions and i tell myself if i am honest to a degree that is far higher than what i am right now perhaps i would perhaps achieve the companionship of muhammad sallallahu one of their qualities was honesty truthfulness they stuck firm upon the truth always no matter what, they could have lost anything and everything. The world thought they were absurd. Take a look at the messages that went across the globe at the time where the, the leaders were called towards Islam by letters written on behalf of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sealed by him. They thought that these were a bunch of mad people. Astaghfirullah. Deep down they knew there was nothing mad about it, but materialism made them not accept the message in most cases. It was materialistic clinging that made them deny the truth up to today. If we become so inclined towards materialistic life and that becomes our aim, we tend to, to turn a blind eye to the truth. So we haven't learned from the Sahaba. We haven't learned from the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, everyone loves that they earn and it is good and it is halal and it is an act of worship, but not to compromise the truth not to compromise justice, not to eat each other up, not to do that which is bad, it is immoral, it is unethical. And then we earn, that's not how it's supposed to be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us halal sustenance. And may Allah make it easy for us. May Allah never test us with those tests. And may He forgive us where we have faltered. So my beloved brothers and sisters, let's look at something very interesting. They had in them something known as conviction. That was another quality. Like I told you, I, I want to know what are the qualities of these Sahaba? Why are they so special? Well, they had conviction, faith. They knew if something came from Allah and His Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that was my success. There is no other way that I will achieve true success. Even if I lost the whole world and my family members and I was persecuted and I was driven out of my home and for example, all my things and property was taken away from me, it still does not change anything in the eyes of Allah. What is right is right. I'm convinced. It is not for a true believing male or female that when Allah and his messenger have declared something, they think twice about it or they are doubting it or they think they have a choice in that regard. No, true believer, you hear that Allah said this, you are the first one there. That was a condition or a quality of the Sahaba. That is why Islam spread where it did because they were convinced they learned it, they were convinced about it, they spread it. Another quality. What is another quality? The preparedness or readiness to sacrifice for the sake of Allah. They had that quality which was unmatched. They sacrificed not just their wealth, but wallahi their lives as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson. No one is asking us to make much of a sacrifice. Initially, the sacrifice is upon ourselves. Fight your laziness. May Allah make us all strong. Initially, it is to fight your laziness. Get up early, a little bit earlier than Salatul Fajr. Try out, try out Salatul Tahajjud a few times in the month. 
Try it out once, twice in the year. See how your life changes. But you have to fight laziness. Without sacrifice, my beloved brothers and sisters, you achieve zero, nothing. You need to discipline yourself and so do I. We all need to do this. This is what I learned from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They sacrificed their wealth, their wealth, not two and a half percent of it, not 10% of it, 100% of it at times. Look at Abu Bakr as Siddiq. He was known as Afdalu man masha ala al ardi ba'd al anbiya. The best to be created by Allah from among mankind to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah. What got him to that status? All these qualities I'm talking about. He sacrificed 100% of his wealth, not once, a few times. And he was asked, What have you left at home? He says, I've left Allah and his Rasul, which means, you know what? Allah will provide and the guidance is of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many of us, we're not even being asked for 50%. We're not even being asked to donate it to a specific person or organization, but rather to reach out to those in need in general. We wouldn't want to even work out more than two and a half percent because we know that belongs to Allah. And we are satisfied when we've given two and a half percent, we say it's done. No, my beloved brothers and sisters, you want a quality of the Sahaba, learn to sacrifice. Sacrificing is not just your wealth, but even your time. You need to sacrifice your time. You know, I'm intrigued when I go back to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They took from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when they were told that the best from amongst you are those who are best to their spouses. Wallahi, they went out of their way to make sure that their spouses bore witness for them that these are really the best of men to us. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who are best to our family members, who are best to those whom we interact with, who are an asset to those who come across us or who have interacted with us in any way whatsoever. We should empower people by the expression on our faces. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Really, I've used words that are very, very important to empower someone through your expression. Many of us look depressed because yes, indeed, there are problems. There are issues. Try to smile. They won't take a bond note from you for each smile. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Really, it, it's something uplifting. I could have had a very bad day, but I come to the masjid. I'm greeted by brothers. They are greeting me not because I drive the best vehicle, not because I have a lot, but just because I'm a brother. Subhanallah, just because I am connected, we are here for the pleasure of Allah. You could be black or white or green or yellow. That is besides the point. You could be rich or poor. That is besides the point. You could be big or small. That is also besides the point. Subhanallah. But what is, is to go back to the lives of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Why were they special? I promise you. If we have within us a few of these qualities, even if we make the intention to develop a few of these qualities, inshallah, our level will improve. Our closeness with Allah would improve. They had conviction. They were sacrificing for the sake of Allah. They would never ever allow anything to get between them and Allah and their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, take a look at what happened as a result. As a result, subhanallah, they learned they defended Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They defended him with their life. They followed what he said. They defended Islam. So many of them were martyred defending Islam. People wanted to wipe Islam out. Look at the Battle of Badr. 313 Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And here the enemy, a thousand strong, powerful people who came in with weaponry, etc. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes a dua. He says, oh Allah, this is the number. Here we are. You give us victory, you are worshipped, subhanallah. If you are worshipped, you would like to be worshipped. Here, here are the men, this is Islam, we've all come to you. If these were gone, what would happen? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. This is why one day there was an issue between a man from among the Badriyin and the, the others where he did something. And someone said something very derogatory about him. Now, look at the sacrifice that this Sahabi had made, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari radiallahu anhu. In fact, there are other narrations of even other of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know what happened? Their sacrifice that had been made for Islam was taken into consideration because 
as the years passed, they became stronger, they became better, they became people who were closer to Allah. Doesn't it happen with us as you grow older? Perhaps you become a little bit more conscious of the fact that you're aging. So now you have to start thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you like it or not, because you're going into your grave soon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. That is the beauty of aging. Do you know to, to become old is a gift of Allah? Because Allah is giving you an opportunity to say, you know what, I've given you age to know for sure and certain that you are becoming weaker. You are no longer, your eyesight actually starts failing you. Where things become blur, that's your first sign to say, hang on, you are no longer as you used to be. Subhanallah, start preparing for the next life. Everybody else is gone. Now take a look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. This particular Sahabi, when the Prophet sallallahu heard a statement against him, do you know what he says? He says, وَمَا يدريك لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ اطَّلَعَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَدْرٍ فَقَالْ اِعْمَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ فَإِنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَكُمْ Subhanallah. He says, you know what? Don't speak low of these companions of mine. These were there from the very beginning. They were with me during the battle of Badr. And how do you know? Allah looked at the hearts of the people who took part in the battle of Badr. And he said to them, do as you please from today. I have forgiven you completely. Because they were ready to die for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not, or the bulk of them did not. But that was the sacrifice. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. As a result, they spread Islam to where? Wallahi, recently I visited West Africa. I promise you, every time I speak and I tell our sisters, our brothers, when you turn away from Allah, remember one thing, Allah says in the Quran in more than one place, various wording, but the same meaning. If you turn away, Allah promises, we will replace you easily with someone else who will not be like you. You think we need your worship? We'll have someone in West Africa do that. You think we need you to sacrifice to attend something that would have been of your benefit to explain my Quran, meaning my words, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or some ruling of your life of uh, and Islam, etc. If you are not going to attend, we're not going to force you. There are others who will attend. There are others who will do it wholeheartedly and consider it an honor. If you remove your hijab, for example, it's not like Allah needs your hijab. You need it. Allah creates another 10 people in some poor part of the world that will don the hijab as a result of your removal of it. That's what he says in the Quran. It sounds a little bit hard, doesn't it? But wallahi, it's a reality check. If you are not honest, don't worry. As a result of your dishonesty, Allah will create 10 other people who are honest. And you know what? You will see that on the day of judgment that look, Allah replaced you. There was a chance for you to be honest. There was a chance for you to be just. You were not just, you were not honest. Well, we created someone in Sierra Leone, another whole bunch of people who were honest as a result. I was overwhelmed. I'm talking about myself. When I visited, for example, one of the countries that I did was Sierra Leone recently. Wallahi, I was weeping. I was crying and I said to Allah, Oh Allah, these people, one of the poorest nations on earth, have suffered and struggled, mudslides and floods and Ebola and everything else. Yet, Wallahi, Salatul Fajr, you won't find a space. If you want to attend, you need to come before the Adhan and then you will have a space somewhere inside the masjid. If not, you are somewhere outside. And we have the best, the air condition, the electricity. We have everything, but we're all snoring. We're all asleep. May Allah forgive us. Allah has indeed promised he will replace you with someone else. You did not come. So no problem. There were others who came. And we've seen this with our eyes. So this is why we need to keep on going back to the lives of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Don't just become happy by a story of a companion. Ask yourself, what made them special? Why am I not that special? Today, when someone does well in business, we become jealous. Jealous because why did he make money and I didn't? And we start looking at how to bring him down. But that's the wrong path. That's the path of materialism. Take a look at faith and religion. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu, it's right to ask, 
Why did Allah choose them? Well, you will find a clean answer. These are the qualities they had. They proved it. Islam spread to the east and the west, the north and the south, and everywhere on earth. Subhanallah, you name the country, they are Muslims. You name the country, they are Muslims. Go to South America, go to the Caribbean, go on this side here to Australia, New Zealand, Fiji Islands, go to Puerto Rico, wherever you want. There are a large chunk of Muslims everywhere, worshipping Allah. Where are we? Where are we? These were the efforts made by the true men and women that were true to their promise or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, ponder deeply over what I've said. Let's develop our qualities. Let's develop our love for Allah, for goodness, for justice. Even if we lose absolutely everything. If you have Allah in reality, you've lost nothing. And if you've gained everything material and lost Allah in the process, Wallahi, thumma wallah, you have zero, you have lost everything. May Allah protect us all. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik.